learning any foreign language, no matter how quote unquote easy it is, to extremely good level of great depth where you can really communicate all the things you want to say and all the things you feel is no small feat. It takes years, and I do mean years, of dedication, interest, and pursual. And if you're not willing to do that, then that's fine, but that's a huge issue, especially if you really want to get into the culture, especially if you want to know the ins and outs. And by that I mean, it's not just getting into the culture for the sake of appreciation. You might think, well, I don't really care very much about Thai culture or Peruvian culture or whatever. That's fine. It's also so you don't get ripped off. Because in a lot of these countries that people go to, to Geomax, they see a foreigner, some pasty white guy from the United States or Canada or the UK. They know he's monoglottic. He only speaks English. They know they could bilk him out of his money, potentially, or trick or deceive him simply because he doesn't know the local language or doesn't know it well enough. So that's another reason, if you're going to Geomax, to make sure you spend the time, energy, and resources into really mastering the local language so you don't get ripped off and don't get screwed over on top of all the other cultural stuff that might be important too, depending on who you are. Now, speaking of cultural stuff, language is probably the primary preeminent factor here. And I know tons and tons of people, guys who went abroad to Geomax, who can kind of sort of get by in the local language, but they're really a disadvantage when it counts. For example, if they need to go to the hospital and there's some medical issue, if they need to do banking and there's some issue, and so on and so forth. So really, really useful to at least get the local language to a very good level so you know what the hell is going on, people don't mistreat you, and you know what the deal is. Now, speaking of culture, there are these other factors, things you're just not used to, things that you might personally find very, very odd. So years ago, I lived in South Korea for two years, give or take, and I was there essentially to make money. I was there to save up money for a master's degree. And I was working a lot at the time, more than I had pretty much ever worked in my entire life. And so I didn't have a lot of time to learn the language. Another thing that was really to my disadvantage there, but culturally I did pick up on a lot of stuff. And I learned that, for example, Korean culture is not my culture. Korean culture is not the kind of culture I want to live and breathe in because there were just too many things there that I disliked. So for example, the conformity issue, the collectivist issue, the fact that they just expect you to conform to whatever they say, especially if it comes from a superior. Just like in Japan, Korea has a drinking culture. Now, personally, I utterly despise alcohol. I despise it more than any other substance I can think of. I never drink it, period, ever, not even a little bit. But that was not something that would fly with the Koreans. And so in true Korean fashion, because I'll get into that a bit, I had to make up elaborate lies as to why I couldn't drink. And I told them I had a potentially life-threatening allergy to alcohol. That's not true. I don't like it, and it's not good for my health. I don't think it's good for anyone's health, but I won't die, I don't think, if I consume alcohol. But I told them that because that was the only way to get them off my back. Whereas in a Western environment, I could just say, uh, I'm just not into alcohol. And most people would think, okay, that's cool, as long as he doesn't tell us not to drink, right? And I don't tell people what to do. But that wasn't the case. The different idea of respect that Koreans have. Respect isn't about genuinely feeling a sense of appreciation for the other person and according them that sense of appreciation. It is much more about this guy is older or he's more experienced, so you need to bow down to him. Things like that. Now, I'm only offering these examples because the Korean experience is probably the experience that was most radical for me, even though I've traveled to other places. That was the only place in Asia that I actually lived for an extended period of time. Apart from that, I've spent most of my time in Europe, admittedly. That said, there are going to be a host of other experiences that are really weird and strange that you're going to have to get used to in whatever country you decide to settle down in. And you might not like it. You might not enjoy it. And then you have to do the cost-benefit analysis and say to yourself, well, is it worth going through rigmarole and all the BS of having to deal with these cultural artifacts that I can't stand, or is it not? All right. The idea of geomaxing, fundamentally, is predicated really only on finding a quote-unquote partner, some sort of female that will stick with you and be loyal to you, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't take into account all the other factors that can lead to your ruination. 
And all the things I've already mentioned are related to each other. So for example, if you don't like the local culture, despite wanting to quote unquote geomax, you're going to be less inclined to want to learn the language. And if you're less inclined to learn the language, you're going to know less and less about the culture. So you're not going to know the rules of etiquette and how you should behave. These are things that people don't think about, especially if you spent most of your life in one country, such as the United States, the UK, or Canada. Things are done a certain way. And in Europe, even, there are differences, although the differences are often a lot more subtle. But in places like Thailand, Vietnam, Korea, they're often quite different. And in a place like Latin America, they can be reasonably different. And these are all things that you have to bear in mind before you decide to head out into the blue yonder and just geomax because you think that's your best option. And the final point I want to make with respect to this is pretty simple. It would behoove you enormously to learn the culture and the language of these places precisely because if you're there to geomax, you better make damn hell sure that you're not bringing your girlfriend slash future wife back to your old Anglophone country. Everyone by now should know what happens when you meet your Thai or Vietnamese wife and then bring them back to, for example, the United States or Canada or the UK or Australia. Everyone knows what happens. The risk of divorce increases immensely. The stability that you used to know in that respective country will be gone. And so if you geomax and decide you want to settle down with a woman from that respective community, culture, ethnicity, or whatever, then you need to brace yourself, prepare yourself for the fact that you're going to have to stay there. If you bring them back, there will be problems. I never forget to tell this story about a guy I knew eons ago on YouTube, 12, 13, 14, 15 years ago, a guy from California who saw the writing on the wall. He went to the Philippines, found some local Filipino, learned Tagalog, which is the local language, moved to some small city slash large town in the boonies of the Philippines and never left. He even knew what the deal was. He knew that he had to really get into the culture, et cetera, et cetera, learn the language, and he also knew that he didn't dare take his wife back to California where he was originally from. And so all these things tie into each other, and it should give you either pause or food for thought before you decide to geomax. If all you're there to do is to have some fun, I guess a lot of this stuff doesn't apply. But even then, you don't want to get ripped off at the local level. So knowing what's going on vis-a-vis -vis the language can be quite important. But if you're looking for some long-term prospect, like a lot of people are, frankly speaking, a lot of guys are looking for something long-term they can rely on, then you better brace yourself, which kind of leads to a final point here. Let's say you do meet some woman from local culture, ethnicity, place, whatever. There will be cultural differences there and linguistic barriers that you're going to struggle with. Now, maybe it doesn't matter to you that you can't really communicate what you want to say exactly to your wife because she won't understand you and vice versa. But that can be a factor. And that's yet another reason to learn the language well because otherwise you might miss cues. You could end up in some hot water if your wife decides to screw you over because you don't know the language and consequently the culture very well. All these things tie into each other. Anyway, I thought that was something useful to talk about. I have lived the majority of my life outside of the United States from which I originally came, and for good reason. Those reasons have, however, nothing to do with geomaxing. Nonetheless, I have accumulated various experiences over the years, observations, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which might be useful to you, especially if you're younger, or not even if you're younger, you decide to take the plunge and head out to a foreign country for whatever purpose, but above all for geomaxing purposes. So, as always, thank you for tuning in. Please leave a like, share, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz and mumbo jumbo. And if I'm still alive, I will check you out later. May the gods watch over you. Take care.